Hello everyone, Carol here. I'm doing this as a video rather than my usual lives that I do for my group because I'm sharing this across several groups these days and it's just much easier to uh, share the, the videos around. Um, I have just received a little batch of new titles. Uh, I used to get them all in monthly boxes and do a big new titles reveal but now I'm tending to just order a couple of weeks worth of new titles at a time or maybe a month's worth when I'm putting in my own orders. I think that product knowledge is at the core of being a good consultant. It used to be a lot easier to build that up in the days when all of the orders came to us. We had a chance to look at all the books that the customers had ordered before um, sorting and distributing them. These days, they're all going directly to the customer. So particularly for new consultants, it's much tougher to build up your product knowledge and familiarize yourself with the different uh, titles that we've got. So that's where product knowledge videos come in and hopefully they'll help to address that a little. If you've got good product knowledge, then you can impress your customers by coming up with good relevant suggestions for the child that they're describing to you. So let's get started. Not a huge pile, it's maybe five or six titles here, but uh, bit by bit, eh? So this is one, the Animal Orchestra plays Mozart. I really enjoy the uh, little musical books. The sound books are extremely popular. And I also find that people love this as a way to begin to introduce their kids to classical music. And um, like all of our sound books, it has a little switch at the back which you can turn on and off, which can be a lifesaver if you have been delighted for quite long enough. So this is, um, let's start off with the, you know, there's a button on the front page and that's also, uh, oh, it's the horn concerto. You can switch it off as well by pressing again. And then it's got a bunch of different, it tells you that the little animals in their little speech bubbles and so on are telling you a bit about Mozart, who is a very approachable composer for kids because he was a child prodigy and it's great to be able to do the oohs and ahs when they hear what he was able to do at age seven and so on. Uh, there's another one. I think that's a symphony. Uh, Ah oh, yes, and around each little button, it tells you what the piece of music is. Anyway, that's Animal Orchestra Plays Mozart. There are four different uh, pieces in there and it's beautiful. I haven't got the Beethoven one yet, but I will be getting that. I'm a classical music buff anyway, so suits me. But So that is um, an addition. Actually, I would add that the ones like um, Carnival of the Animals and the Four Seasons and the other classical musical ones have sold very well for me. Now, a new one in our uh, series of books about racism, and this is Questions and Answers about Racism. So the Questions and Answers series is awesome. It concentrates on the who, why, what, where, how um, questions. You know, there's why on that page and so on. These are what kindergarten teachers call the five W's, the question words. Uh, so as, a, as an aside, I would say that you'll do your kindergarten, your child's future kindergarten teacher, huge favours by teaching your kids what questions and answers are. Because any kindergarten teacher will tell you that kids don't actually get that, a lot of them, when they enter kindergarten. I've done talks in kindergartens where I've asked a question and all the little hands uh, shoot up and when you point to somebody they'll say, my dog threw up at the weekend and it has no relation to the question that you just asked. So questions and answers are a concept, a skill that children need to build. And this is a, you're getting a big hidden benefit there with this particular series. So the, the way, uh, the, the questions it's looking at, first of all, what, what is racism? Uh, what's wrong with the idea of race and so on? And of course the, the answers are layered underneath the tabs. Great big tabs, nice for your three-year-olds or what four-year-olds. Um, why? Uh, why is it difficult to talk about racism? It is, isn't it? So uh, why do some people want lighter skin? Why do we have different traditions? Then we've got um, 
yes or no will my life be worse because my skin is darker why is it racist to copy people um is it my fault that they're bullying me and so on and then there's a how page uh how did it get so bad? How were people enslaved? How can racism affect families? Uh, and so on. How are racist ideas spread? And then we've got what can I do? Which I love because Asborn books often include a call to action. What can you as a, as a person do to help? Uh, what can I do to stop racism? What happens if I ignore racism? Some, you know, these are some really big, important questions that that, you, that are presented in a way that you can easily and comfortably talk about them. Well, reasonably comfortably talk about with kids. And then who are you when it asks a little bit about identity and shows kids from around the world? And then things you should know um, about historical racism and anti-racism tips. So it's not heavy handed, it's not preachy, but it it's in the spirit of inquiry, okay? So that is questions and answers about racism. It is, this series is aimed at preschoolers, but I think that that's a good starting point for conversations, even with somewhat older kids. Then we've got See Inside Germs. Now it's a nice opportunity to point out that our Lift the Flap learners come for all age groups. That was a very simple presentation of an important and complex topic. This is a much more detailed book. Uh, you can see there that there's a lot more text. There are much more involved pictures and of course, lots and lots of information. Uh, let's see if I can open. Oh, I should get these open before I start talking, shouldn't I? I can never find the tab when I'm, there we are. So it's a great way of layering a lot more information in underneath the tabs. So you've got, you know, they look at good and bad bacteria, vicious viruses, pesky protozoa, that's amoebas and the like, um, fascinating fungi, uh, spreading germs it had more than fun but anyway i've missed a page i think and then um natural defenses this is also very very topical these days vaccines antibiotics and superbugs and microbe heroes beneficial bacteria um so that is see inside germs um aimed quite a bit older i would say that the majority of adults would find something interesting that they didn't previously know in these books, but they're great for the older elementary and into junior high kids, I would say. So lots of different levels of Lift the Flaps. Then we've got Fold Out Timeline Planet Earth. I love this one. I am a geologist by training, so I'm going to like this, obviously. And what it does is on one side, it's got can you see it's got the timeline there and it talks about what's going on in each of the ages. And on the other side, it looks at what life like looked like um, in each of these ages as well. I'm not, I'm not even opening it fully. It's, it's long, it's packed with interesting facts. It's a beaut. Um, then we have a couple of box sets. Firstly, I've got numbers matching game. With these little sets, you get a book which uh, uses the artwork from the little package, uh, but also, so you're going through all of your counting there. And at the back, it tells you um, how to play numbers memory games, how to play numbers bingo, and so on. A bit of a parent's guide at the back. And then what you've got is four little boards like this. What am I doing? I'm <laughs> pulling from the wrong side. There we are, four little boards like that and a whole bunch of the little tiles for doing the games. So a versatile pack and great for teaching your child numbers and for playing memory games, observation skills, matching, all that type of thing. 
And lastly, we have the Alphabet Book and Jigsaw. Now, unlike all of the others, other um, jigsaw boxes, it isn't showing you a picture of the jigsaw size in the real size on the back, but that's okay. The main thing to know about these is that they are really quality jigsaws. These are, you can see the size of pieces there, right? And they're really thick, precisely cut card. There's nothing worse than a cheap old jigsaw for a small child because if those pieces curl or aren't precisely cut, it can be much more difficult to get the pieces to go together and stay together. And that's just frustrating for somebody because jigsaws, amongst other things, are building up um, fine motor skills to manipulate those pieces together, as well as a whole slew of other skills, um, matching, visual discrimination, hand-eye coordination, that, there's a whole list of them. I could do a separate post on that, actually. And um, there's always a book in with them. This is a simple alphabet book. There we are. Using artwork from some of our other, one of our other books, which I have not taken the time to match up. It's not exactly the same as any book. It's just a simplified version. Doing um, one page per letter okay so a beautiful gift for a preschooler um this is a 25 piece jigsaw so that's it for now i am putting in an order today where i'm going to be getting a bunch of the other ones including um a couple of those new uh older uh, chapter books novels for older kids which I will be very much looking forward to seeing because that's somewhere where it, I'm excited that we're building our collection. I hope that's of use to you and gives you a little bit of an idea about which ones you might want to order for your own kids or add to your collection for markets and showing and so on. Bye bye!